So urticaria is a rash that occurs on the skin, it can occur anywhere on the body. Um, typically, it's a, a red rash with some raised areas in it, um, and they often have a white top to the raised area. Um, it can occur anywhere, and usually the typical history is it comes and goes, so it goes away from where it's appeared and then it will appear somewhere else. Um, and they typically look like nettle strings or where you've been bitten by an insect, uh, as this is the same sort of rash seems to uh, look that looks the same. Um, and it's due to a little bit of histamine release, which is something in your cells which causes that, that reaction. And it's the end result of, a, of an immune cascade. So in children, it's a clinical diagnosis. So that means we have to really see the rash or, or see pictures of it and hear about how the rash has progressed. Um, photographs are usually really helpful, but there's no specific test that you we would normally do um, for this. Um, you may want to exclude allergic causes if it's not really clear how this has happened or if there seems to be something triggering that rash. Um, but sometimes it may just be a case of um, hearing about how the rash has progressed and how it's um, and whether it's continuing or going away. And that would be how the, um, the diagnosis is made. So most children would uh, would have a, a treatment with antihistamine first and parents often use a sedating antihistamine that they can get from over the counter. And that will be the first line of treatment. Sometimes that's not effective and depending on the cause of the urticaria, sometimes you need more treatments or different treatments. And there's some non-sedating antihistamines such as loratadine or cetirizine. Those ones may then be used instead. And sometimes you may need to use bigger doses of those. If those aren't working, then the treatments would also include something called Montelukast, an anti-leukotriene inhibitor, and also sometimes some uh, immune suppressive medicines. And if things are very difficult, we sometimes use an injection of something called omalizumab or um, anti-IgE, which targets the release of that histamine to try and reduce it. This is a sort of uh, the last resort. However, if this is due to an allergen, then we will uh, make some uh, a plan in order to avoid that or reduce the exposure to the allergen, which is triggering those, uh, those reactions. And if that's a food, that's fairly straightforward. Environmentally, it's a bit more challenging. So most people will have, 20% of people will have urticaria over the course of their life. So it's quite common. But in children, particularly young children, viral infections are a common cause and they can trigger a urticarial reaction, which will often settle after a few days. Sometimes they can persist, in which case, if it lasts for more than six weeks, coming and going more than twice a week, it will be called a chronic urticaria. And that those are a little bit more difficult to treat and perhaps need some more medication. Sometimes some medicines can trigger the reactions, such as ibuprofen, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And that can often cause some rash or make you more susceptible to developing this rash. Um, and occasionally there may be triggers for this rash if you're susceptible to it, things like exercise or perhaps cold or heat uh, temperature can trigger it. Um, and of course, then there are the allergic causes. Uh, I've mentioned food previously, and also occasionally people get contact reactions with, um, with some environmental um, objects. And sometimes grass in the summer, sitting on grass may trigger the rash for people who are a little bit so sensitive. Uh, so a number of different, uh, different causes. Well, I think that it really about the level of concern you've got about your child, really. It's difficult to know how, um, how what your urticaria is due to. So if you're confident that this is a short-lived episode and it's got better, then that's probably okay. If you're getting recurrent episodes, I think it would be worth 
uh, investigating and coming to see whether the whether the cause is a chronic urticaria and whether there's other treatments available. And I think allergies are important to exclude. And if you're suspicious that there may be a trigger for it in terms of allergy, then that would also be uh, something that I would probably want to see and try and help with to, to make sure that there isn't anything easy to, to stop this from happening. Um, and I think the more important thing to say is it's usually not dangerous allergy, uh, like an allergy, um, and it doesn't usually progress to give you a serious re reaction, but it can, uh, in few cases, it can do. So if you're worried about that and there's some swelling developing with the rash as well, something called angioedema, then that would be important to, uh, to, to consider as well.